Home University and the University of Science and Technology of China. Um, so they're the runner-up in object detection in the wider uh, data category, and the talk will be given by the Okay. So uh, the topic of this presentation is FPPNet, Literacy Reporting in Deep Convolutional Network. And I'm coming here from uh, Microsoft Research Asia. And so here are some uh, highlights of our group. And in this position, uh, we rank the second in the detection task of the provided data track. And also rank the third in the classification task. And also, uh, all of our methods have been published in, a, in an ECC paper this year. And we have also released this paper two months ago before the competition deadline. And we also recently uh, disclosed all the details of this work in the second version on archive. So as an overview, we propose a new model called FPPNet. It is a new network structure. So for the classification task, the network, uh, the FPPNet will improve all the CNN architectures <coughs> in the future. And also for the detection task, the new model uh, is at least tens of times faster than our CNN model and is as accurate. And clearly now it is the area of uh, deep learning and convolutional neural networks. And we have heard three talks this morning. So I want to say something about uh, <coughs> traditional computation, something which is very successful in, in the traditional computation, that is uh, the spatial brain matching or SPM. So in a traditional uh, image classification pipeline, usually on an even image, we will extract dense features from the image, and then we will encode this, uh, encode this feature, uh, like for example, vector condensations of coding of each, uh, feature vectors. After that, we have a feature map of the entire image, and then we will uh, pull it into a fixed length representation using spatial pyramid matching. And after that, we will learn a classifier on this full image representation. So this pipeline has been used many years, uh, has been used for many years, until recently, the CNN comes in. <coughs> so in the context of the CNN, we can uh, consider the uh, six extractor and also the uh, encoders as some kinds of uh, convolutional layers because they are just uh, local feature ext extractors and there are also some kinds of sliding filters. And on the other hand. The classifier such as SVM is kind of FC layers because it just projects a full a whole image uh, representation into uh, a score. But what about the SPM? It, is it just simply pooling in the uh, convolutional neural network? Let's see what the role plays, uh, what, what, what uh, SVM plays uh, in the traditional model. At least it has two properties. The first property is that the SPM can generate a fixed length representation from a whole image, regardless of its input size. And the second rule is that the SPM is a multi-level pooling structure. So it has some finer grid, and it also has some uh, causal grid. So this structure uh, is well known that uh, it can be robust to object deformation. So is these prop nice properties have been uh, ignored in the CNN uh, architecture. So here is a traditional uh, CNN structure. Given an image, usually we have to fix the size, uh, fix the input size of the network, and then we apply the convolutional <coughs> layers and then the FC layers. In our model, we allow the input uh, image to take any size. Uh, both during training and during testing. And on this uh, any size image, actually we can still apply the convolutional layers. This is because the convolutional layers are just sliding filters. It does not depend on the <coughs> image size. But after that, we will have a feature map of any size. So we introduce the spatial pyramid pooling layer to solve this problem. And in this layer, we fix the number of bins uh, in this pooling layer, but we do not fix the bin size. This is in contrast to the traditional sliding window pooling. So after that, we can have a fixed length uh, image representation, and then we can still put it into the FC layers. 
And we call this new network structure as PPNet because it has the spatial pyramid pulling layer. So there are some nice properties of the SPPNet. <coughs> First, as we introduced before, the network and can accept variable input sizes and scales. So we are able to do some multi-size training <coughs> as a kind of data augmentation, and we can also do some multi-scale testing uh, to better uh, average the scores. And moreover, we can have a full image view as a single image representation. And in this re representation, it is not necessary to do any cropping. And on the second hand, the SPP layer is a multi-level pooling structure. So as in the traditional SPM, it is known to uh, be robust to deformation. Moreover, this SPP layer is uh, operated on the feature maps of any sizes. So it is possible for us to pull only from some local regions <coughs> to generate a fixed lens vector. So uh, this will make, an, make the object detector much faster, as uh, I will introduce later. So uh, we test the SPP net on four very different network architectures in the literature. So here the blue line are uh, our, our baselines of the models without SPP net. And then we introduce the SPP layer, but only use its uh, multi-level pooling behavior. And we can see that uh, the SPP layer can improve all of the network structures by about uh, one point of five error. So next, and we use multiple size to train a same network during the training stage, this is also another property of the SPP layer. And then we can see another game. And in all these experiments, we see that all the CNN architectures have been improved by the just by the SPP layer, <coughs> independent of their specific designs. So for the classification competition, uh, competition and we use a seven convolution layer uh, SPP net and using the standard 10 field testing, uh, the error is about 11. And so when we significantly increase the number of views and scales, and the number will reduce to about 9. And then after model average, the number will reduce to about 8. So um, this is the entry we submitted to the uh, competition, and finally in rank the third. So about our network, I believe, uh, actually, it is a shallow one, at least compared with the Google Net and, and Oxford's results. It only has seven convolutional layer, and we can train this model inside a single uh, Titan GPU uh, within three to four weeks. However, also because our network is shallow, and we believe that it is potential, because we have many experiments showing that the SPP can improve all network structures independent of their design. So, and actually, uh, after the competition, we have witnessed uh, more than one point in uh, using a different network. Next, I would like to introduce our detection algorithm. <coughs> the basic idea of our detection algorithm is to apply the spatial pyramid pooling on the regions of the feature map. So given an image which has any sizes, we can still apply the convolutional layers because they have sliding filters. So after that, we can have the convolutional feature maps of the entire image. And then if we crop a small region in this feature map, and then apply the spatial pyramid pooling, we can still generate a fixed length vector, and then put it into the FC layers. So this will allow us to extract features very efficiently. So how our methods compare with RCNN? In the case of RCN, the features are extracted from image regions. RCN will extract about, for example, 2,000 image regions and then warm it into a fixed size and then apply the entire network. So in this case, RCN will apply about 2,000 networks for a single image. On the other hand, for our method, we only need to apply all the convolutional layers once on the entire image. And this will produce a feature map of the entire image. And then on the feature map, and we crop the small regions, and then we pull the features. So in both ways, we can have regional features, but our method is much faster. 
So with the regional features, we can do everything just like RCN, such as fine tuning, SVM training, and one important regression. And in our experiments, we found that accuracy is very similar, but our speed is much faster. In the smaller database of VOC 2007, our model can uh, achieve comparable or better uh, MAP than uh, RCN, but our speed is much faster. It can achieve, for example, 24 to 64 times the up. So this is also the method we submit uh, to the competition. We do not use any other uh, modification beyond RCN. And our single model result is 31.8 in the provided data check. And combining our six models, the result is boosted to 35.1, and this ran the second. And what I want to highlight is also the computational time on this large data, uh, data set. So uh, for a single image, our method only takes about 0 0.6 seconds to compute the convolutional features on the GPU. And if using the same models, the RCA method will take about 32 seconds. So for all the 40,000 testing images, it will take our method about 8 hours to compute all the uh, convolutional features. But this time will be 15 GPU days. So, um, I believe our method is a more practical one, both in, in the case of training and also in the case of testing. <coughs> so in conclusion, we have introduced something that is very traditional in computer vision, that is spatial pyramid matching into the deep convolutional networks. So for the classification <coughs> task, our method can improve all the CNN architectures in the literature. And for the detection task, it is a practical, fast, and accurate method. So for future works, of course, it is possible to apply this SDP layer on deeper networks. And also, uh, we will release the code and our configuration files, and also very detailed technical reports on our website. And that's all. Thank you.